a los gobiernos de Estados Unidos we have to thank the American government que han provocado que han surgido todos estos gobiernos en América Latina that have provoked the emerging of all those governments in Latin America porque la política de Estados Unidos because the American policy foreign ha policy muy negativa para nuestros pueblos has been not exactly positive more negative for our, our people y poco a poco la gente ha comenzado a identificar que eso es así. And people slowly have become to recognize that that is a fact. No eran estadounidenses porque no nacieron aquí. Central America had presidents that uh, who weren't American because they were they weren't been born here. Pero abiertamente partidarios de Estados Unidos. But they were very uh, clearly uh, on the sense and supporting America. Ahora, no solo es que en El Salvador probablemente elijan a un presidente de izquierda. It's not probably not only that in Salvador they will elect uh, a left candidate as president. Sino que Honduras, que fue durante mucho tiempo una base militar de Estados Unidos. That Honduras, that for a very long time was a military uh, place for uh, American troops. Ahora tiene un presidente que es de centro izquierda. Now has a president which is center left. Que es el presidente Zelaya. Who is Zelaya president. Y el presidente Zelaya ingresó al ALBA, o sea, a la Alianza Bolivariana para las Américas. So uh, President Zelaya uh, entered to ALBA, which is uh, the Bolivarian alternative for the Americas. Y ha estado votando en organismos internacionales contra las políticas de Estados Unidos. And he has been voting in international organizations against uh, the policies of America. Y nadie puede decir que Zelaya ni siquiera sea un hombre de izquierda. And no one can say that even Zelaya is a, a left person. Lo que pasa es que en la medida que van queriendo a sus países, but in the way they take care of their own countries, no van queriendo a Estados Unidos they are not 100% compromised with a certain kind of understanding uh, Guatemala. of America. Guatemala. Estados Unidos apoyó en la guerra civil de Guatemala a las peores fuerzas que asesinaron y cometieron masacres. United States supported uh, the very uh, worst forces uh, that uh, made many um, very hard things in Guatemala. Y la tragedia de Guatemala comenzó en 1954. Guatemala tragedy began in 1954. En una décima conferencia interamericana cuando Estados Unidos controlaba la OEA. In the 10th uh, Inter-American Conference when the United States uh, controlled uh, OAS. Que se hizo en Caracas. That was made in Caracas. Cuando yo todavía era un adolescente. When I was a teenager. Pero recuerdo That's bien. It. But I remember pretty clear. Esa conferencia aprobó la invasión a Guatemala. That conference approved uh, the invasion to Guatemala. Guatemala eligió un presidente, el presidente Jacobo Arbenz. Uh, Guatemala chose a president, President Jacobo Arbenz. Que quería entregar la tierra a los campesinos. Who wanted to give land to the farmers, to the people from y eso no significa ser comunista. And that doesn't mean to be a communist. De hecho, no lo era. Actually, he was not. Pero el actual secretario de Estado de Estados Unidos de la época. But in that time, State Secretary of the United States, John Foster Dulles. John Foster Dulles. Creía que sí. He believed he was. Entonces, ¿por qué razón? Porque las tierras que quería entregar Jacobo Arbenz a los campesinos eran propiedad de la United Fruit Company. But why? Well, the why is because the land that a president wanted to deserve and give to the farmers were a property from United Fruit Company. Entonces, Estados Unidos armó a un coronel de apellido Castillo Armas. So the United States armed a colonel uh, which his surname was Castillo Armas. Desde Honduras, From invadieron Honduras. 
de Invade Guatemala, Guatemala, un apoyo logístico de inteligencia y militar de Estados with Unidos, the logistical intelligence support from United States, y derrocaron a Jacob Arbenz, que and, es un presidente electo democráticamente. And they uh, make felt, they make a cup to Jacobo Armas, which was a uh, democratic elected president. Eso costó una guerra civil que recientemente ha concluido. That meant a civil war that uh, recently has concluded. Con grandes matanzas. With great uh, amount of deaths. Con grandes crímenes. With great crimes. Y hoy día Álvaro Colón. And actually Álvaro Colón. El presidente de Guatemala. Today is Guatemala president. Tampoco, ni siquiera es que sea de izquierda. We, we cannot say he is actually a left-wing president. Pero quiere su país. But he loves his country. Quiere una distribución más justa de la riqueza. He wants and aspires a, a more fair and just uh, richness distribution. Y entonces ya Centroamérica no es una base estadounidense. And then Central America is not anymore an American headquarter. Entonces, eh, un poco esa, la, la, la situación es esa. Entonces, en América Latina. That is the actual situation pero, in Latin America. Mientras que Europa se ha hecho muy conservadora. While Europe has become really conservative. En América Latina ha ocurrido lo contrario. America, Latin America has put itself in the opposite side. Um, one last question before we open the floor for questions. It's quite clear that you do not like the United States. And it is equally clear that the United States does not like you. There is another country which does not like the United States and that the US does not like. And that is Iran. And you have something in common with Iran. Both of you have a lot of oil and yet, both of you want to build nuclear power plants. Why do you want to build nuclear power plants when you have so much oil? Primero, first of all, no es cierto que a mí no me guste Estados Unidos. It is not the truth that I don't like America, United States. Si no, no estuviera aquí. If not, I wouldn't be here. Actually, lo que no me gustan son los gobiernos de Estados Unidos. What I don't like is United States governments past. Pero hay que comprender que que nos han hecho mucho daño en América Latina. But uh, it's necessary to understand that that Latin America have suffered really because those governments. Y hoy y América Latina ha venido reaccionando. And America Latina has been reacting to that. Y América Latina hoy día entonces tiene una posición de afirmación de su soberanía. And today Latin America has a position under the principle of the basis that reaffirming its sovereignty right. Y los pueblos olvidados vienen ahora reconociéndose como pueblos. And the forgotten peoples now can recognize themselves as peoples. Y por eso un indio como Evo Morales es presidente de Bolivia. And that's why an Indian as Evo Morales is actually president of Bolivia. Pero no podemos hacer una política desde el odio. But we cannot make a policy beginning from from hateness. Porque el odio solo conduce al odio. Because uh, that feeling only uh, gets us into hateness. Y la violencia solo conduce a la violencia. And violence only produces violence. Entonces. Nosotros no fomentamos el odio contra ningún pueblo. So we actually don't support any kind of violence or, or those kind of feelings to any kind of Y en ningún caso contra el pueblo de Estados Unidos. And in any case, we do not support it uh, to United States. Creo que ustedes saben que el presidente Chávez ha ayudado I think you all pretty know that uh, President Chavez has helped a comunidades pobres de aquí de Estados Unidos. to very poor communities in the United States. ¿Lo saben? Do you know that? Okay. 
De nuevo, pocos. Again, just a few. Qué casualidad, ¿no? Oh, what a coincidence. ¿No? 